coming up on the Mountain Bike Chronicles. We follow G. Atherton through the first race of the season in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa. And we hook up with the Rocky Mountain Freeride team in the birthplace of freeriding, Kamloops, BC. All this and more coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles. Welcome to Peter Maritzburg. World Cup, round one, South Africa. It's going to be an Damn. exciting adventure. It's the first time in two years the UCI World Cup has returned to South Africa, and G hopes to defend his 2010 World Cup overall championship. Workers are putting final touches on the course as the riders make their way up for the course walk, their first glimpse of the track. But it's the uplift. It's the downhill uplift. First World Cup of the year. Sadly, we don't need uh, chairlifts. They've, up they've upgraded us. So we get to uh, kick back in the back of this pickup. I like to feel numb. Yeah, I feel my legs. Gotta really make the most of this track walk because I'm not coming up again. As G walks the new course, he realizes it has less elevation and more pedaling than he's used to for a World Cup track. <laughs> I like walked over this brow at the end of like a 25 minute flat straight thinking it was like dropping into the finish arena. And it goes like down into a valley, up the other side, and then back into the woods. Definitely one of the more demanding tracks and, and definitely one of the more physical tracks in the season. Making his way back to the tents, G's mechanics are ready to put the final touches on his bike for the first practice runs. After the course walkthrough and bike tune-ups, the riders get a day of practice runs before qualifying. Steve Pete of Great Britain was the 2009 world champion but finished a disappointing seventh in 2010. This year, he's looking for redemption. Aaron Gwynn, a newcomer to the downhill scene, is ranked third in the world in only his third season. Having spent his early teens as a motocross racer, he's no stranger to high speed on two wheels. 2010 runner-up and local favorite Greg Minar is a veteran of the downhill scene, racing internationally since age 17. Greg won the race here in 2009 and wants nothing more than to repeat as champion in his home country. G is working hard to memorize the course as he needs to start the season strong to repeat his world championship title from last year. As the day of practice comes to an end, the riders come back to their team's tents to tune their bikes. In a world that's decided by milliseconds, every turn of a wrench can be the difference between the podium and the poorhouse. As the World Cup season begins in Africa, another season is beginning on the other side of the planet. You know, here we are in Kamloops, uh, kind of doing some spring riding with the team. The Rocky Mountain Freeride team, featuring Thomas Vanderham, Wade Simmons, and Jeff Golovich, are starting their season off with a team ride in Kamloops, BC, Canada. Have you ridden that stuff before? Woo! Got a fresh bike here, making the final adjustments, making it my own. And uh, I'm gonna take it for a spin. I can honestly say, guys, I love Kamloops. Like, I really, like, it's, it's awesome here. Kamloops has been one of the best spots in the world for mountain biking for over a decade and is widely considered the birthplace of free riding. I'm gonna break these puppies in. The area's dry, shapeable dirt and rolly hills make it a mountain biking playground. Even though the team is made of all good friends, their busy schedules seldom allow them to ride together. Pretty awesome opportunity for us all to ride together because we're all so busy doing our own things, we never really get the chance. Uh, everyone's got busy schedules, so um, when we can all ride together, it's really fun. Riding behind Thomas, you notice he really has his own style. Rocky Mountain's free ride team has a well-rounded roster of riders. It's, it's awesome because everyone has a different style. You know, Thomas, uh, He's kind of more racy, high speed, and goes big. Thomas Vanderham, although still at a young age, has already secured himself as a mountain bike legend. He is known for his phenomenal style and willingness to go big. Calmus is a great environment for him because there's a lot of booters, a lot of, a lot of senders. And then Gully is a little more slope style uh, dirt jump. And 
uh, of course, there is a lot, of, a lot of stuff in the cameras for him to hit, too. And then I'm kind of the veteran old man. Wade Simmons is known as the godfather of free riding and has been a professional rider longer than he can remember. Well, I did grow up watching him ride. Wade was my biggest hero as a, as a young kid growing up. I saw him in all the magazines. I think our riding really complements each other just because it's so diverse, and uh, but we all like riding the same sort of things. Kamloops has more amazing riding than the crew knows what to do with. What I love about coming back to Kamloops to ride is the, it's the variety. When you come to Kamloops, it's dry, fast, high speed, slidey, dusty, it's great. It is really fun to, to uh, get the new bikes and, and ride as a group. After an epic week of single track and big air winds down in Kamloops, things are just getting started in South Africa. It's race day, and G is warming up for finals. The first race is always a, a good gauge of, of how your winter training's been. In downhill mountain biking, a huge portion of the training you do is, is fitness-based, you know, gym work, road work, cross-country stuff. It's all about that, that race preparation and then, and then coming into the season hot. In terms of physical preparation, yeah, he's changed stuff. As for mental preparation, I think it's a bit early to tell, but yeah, there's lots of change. I think you've got to change things every year or else it goes stale. And yeah, there's a certain amount of things you can keep constant, but you have to keep changing. One thing that G hopes will not change this year is his overall championship title. The first round, especially with the, the track being what it was this year, it's going to tell you if you've, if you've done the right thing or not. Yes, bro. Big deep, yeah? yeah like you've never dug before. He's just left now, dude. You will be in a few seconds. Yeah, I think he's probably quite confident, actually. I wouldn't rule it out, but at the same time, there's so many good boys and so many fit boys that it could be anyone today. It's going to be a close race. While Dan Brown waits in anticipation, G makes his way to the top of the course for the start of the finals. With the weather improving and the ground drying up, the final day was sure to be a fast one. Steve Pete started early and put up a strong run to take the early lead. It felt fast, but I didn't have much power on the, on the flat section, so I think the big boys might have a little bit more in the legs today. Patriot Aaron Gwynn was up next, carefully picking his lines and then flying his country's colors down the hill recklessly. Beating Pete's time by over six seconds, Gwyn has taken the lead with the fastest time yet. As G makes his way to the top, he has a chance to reflect on his successful 2010 season. 2010 turned out to be the best race season today for me. Twenty ten saw a great battle between G and Greg, with only a few points deciding G as champion in the final race. Whole way through, fighting for the title, and you know it came down to the last round, and when it, coming out on top, coming out victorious was a was a huge thing for me. Their rivalry is strong in twenty eleven. They're no bugging around these days. It's all. Um, it's all flat out, you have to go for it. You know, look how tight the points were last year, look how tight they were the year before, and the year before that, so you can't afford to bring around. You have to go for it every round. Minar and Atherton's final runs are up next, but will they have enough to beat Gwyn's time? The day and contest are coming to a close, but not before the most anticipated rivalry of the weekend. G. Atherton and Greg Minar both qualified near the top and are hot favorites in taking the top spot today. First up is G, hoping his off-season training has paid off to help him through the grueling flat sections of the course. G's 
results are fast for the course, but not good enough to knock off Aaron Gwynn's amazing run, so he sits in second place. G gave it everything he had, but can only sit and watch what Greg does in his final run. Minar takes off, putting everything he can into his pedals, determined to do everything in his power to do his country proud. He barrels down the course, abandoning all style and finesse. The only thing on his mind is speed. Greg launches huge off the last corner hit and flies into the last stretch with Google Zales buzzing, flags waving, and fans cheering. Minar manages to bump ahead of G by just over 1.5 seconds. But he's not fast enough to beat Gwynn. Aaron Gwynn takes the title here in Peter Maritzburg. After the first event of the UCI World Cup Downhill Series, the standings show American Aaron Gwynn in the lead, followed closely by Greg Minar and G. Atherton. The leaderboard is sure to heat up in the upcoming races. In the next episode of Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Grand Junction, Colorado to follow Paul Basagodia at the Ranch Style Dirt Jump Competition. And we hook up with free ride star Alex Prochaska to discuss free skiing and free riding in 2011. All this and more coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles.